Okay, I was just walking across my lawn a couple of days ago and I noticed we were soggy here. We've had a lot of rain lately, but I know from prior excavation here, there was a flood here at one time because someone repaired the main water line with a plastic compression fitting pair coupling. It failed. We didn't have time to do a proper repair, which would be replacing the water line. So I put another PVC coupling down in there. That was only about a year and a half ago. Anyways, looks like we're gonna have to dig this up. We might have to replace the whole line today. My new AT&T fiber line runs right through there. So I'm gonna lay this stick right where the trench is so I don't accidentally cut my fiber. Starting to see some water oozing up. Yep. Okay, let's turn this meter off. So I just filled up a big bucket and a big pitcher of water. Still see it flowing. Maybe it stopped. Now we'll see what we got going on here. Obviously to make this repair, we're gonna have to dig up the whole meter box and everything. And I've piled all my dirt pretty close to there. That's going to be a problem. like it's got a leak on this side as well. I think this meter is actually broken. There you can see the broken bracket right there. It's all floppy. I'm wondering if I should call and see if they can replace the meter. Okay, so there the line is on this side of the hole. I just don't understand why it's running that way because it seems like it would want to go in the house right around there but it actually goes in the house right under our number sign or close to it. Oh well. What I think I'm probably gonna do is dig up just so far and then dig a new trench in a more direct route if there aren't too many routes over here. I'll dig a little bit more and then I think we might go pick up an excavator. I found the fiber line. Apparently they only bury them like four inches below the ground. See it right there. Oh, just flick that right in my face. So I'll just avoid that. I'm just gonna put this little flag over that cable. I was gonna go in the house and get some masking tape and just drape it over like a little blue flag, but my feet are muddy and I don't wanna take off my shoes. So this was already in the yard for something else. So we'll just put it right there. Let's see if we can tighten this up a little bit and buy us some time. See how we did. All right. Now we can uh, move at a more relaxed pace. 
This is why this is obviously an illegal repair. You can't have repairs in the middle of the line with stuff like this because it can break. There's a finite life on those PVC connections. There's user error that's possibly involved and any movement in the pipe can disturb the connection, temperature changes, whatever, which obviously affected this one because this was installed tight when we re-repaired it. So what we really need to do is go all the way back into here with some new pipe. Hey there. All right, let's go see where this comes in the house. So here's where my house takes a little jog right here. This is that corner. Anyway, it comes in right there. So just a couple of feet from the corner, right around here somewhere. So let's hand dig down here till we find it and then we'll know better what we'll need to do out here. Okay, so I think this is where the electrical from my lamp post comes in. It's actually kind of a mess under here. It looks like it's damaged. Let's go back and see where the electrical for the lamppost comes in and see how far off we are down there. Obviously don't want to dig through all this. Okay, so here is the electrical from the lamppost. So we're like 10 inches away. So we just need to go obviously this way a little bit more and another foot down. The water line goes right into concrete. It looks like the water line runs this way, probably under the path, out there somewhere, and then takes a little dog leg toward the water meter. So what I think I'm gonna do is just go ahead and get a trencher or a mini excavator, and I'm just gonna dig a trench if I can come through here through the grass hugging the walk here this bush it's gonna have to come out and it's a twin so might have to go back in
so this is the route I want the new pipe to take. So I've got some connections. I'm going to replace that check valve. You have to have a check valve at your meter and it has to be inside the meter box if I remember right. I haven't done this in like probably almost 20 years. So we're going to go a new check valve to poly. Poly all the way to right here and we're going to solder a copper connection on here and put a screw in barbed stainless steel connection to convert the poly to the copper here then we don't have to mess with all the fittings inside the house or, or bust up that concrete so right now what I'm going to do is just take a shovel and clean up this trench a little bit better Get some of these roots out of the way make sure we're at least a foot down here in South Carolina you have to bury your water line a foot plus so much below the frost line or something like that so we'll just take this a little deeper you can see the original line uh, that might be 14 inches below grade right there so not much to do look at all those roots oh my goodness it's just all roots through there bottom of this ditch to be perfectly smooth. So I'm going to walk along and make sure it's smooth and compacted and totally flat. If I can't make it flat, I would need to add something like sand to the bottom of it to make sure it's flat. I need to get any sticks out of the way because these will cause pinch points. Let me give you an example. So say this stick we're laying across the bottom down there and this was my water line. Well, when I put my water line down on it and then I backfill, that's going to cause a pinch point right there. Or, you know, if I back one of my cars out here to wash them or something, which I will, and they compress everything, they could pinch my water line. So I want to make sure I'm totally flat, totally smooth, and free of sticks and rocks. Obviously a safeguard would be fill the bottom with sand so it's totally level, smooth it out. Once the water pressure is on the pipe though, it'll help keep it from getting crushed. It's out of the way. Alright, I think that looks pretty good. Now it's time to turn off the water and then I'll go to my lowest faucet in the house and drain my system out. And I'll probably start by uncoupling this. I'll try to get this loose right here at this backflow preventer. And then we'll go down there and cut the copper pipe going into the house. Let's see if we can get this loose. I'm gonna loosen this up so hopefully this pipe can spin around. Did that move or did I break something? plastic bag over that just to make sure it doesn't get dirty while I'm working on this now we'll just cut this pipe with a reciprocating saw actually we could use a regular pipe cutter 
Let's clean this up with a little sandpaper. A couple of spots here. I don't want to ruin my pipe cutter with glue. That is some thick copper pipe. That is the good stuff there. Now I am going to take a reciprocating saw and cut this back here. Then we'll clean this up and solder on a connector there. Put a metal reciprocating blade on this. Backward. That's that. We'll go ahead and cut this one out too while I got the saw out. Cut it over here where it kind of disappears. I pulled my fiber line out. I uh, hope I didn't damage it. Now obviously we can't solder this while it's got water in it. So we gotta either let that dry out or find some way to dry it out. Now, supposedly you can stuff white bread in here. If I had some white bread, I would, to stifle the water flow. And the white bread will actually dissolve over time and not clog up all your faucets. You know what? Toilet paper will also dissolve, so. But first, let's get our fitting ready. So this is a three-quarter copper female soldered connection. So we need to rough this up and clean it. Now I like to use a tanning flux. I think most of the pros don't use this, but this actually has some solder in it. We'll flux the fitting as well. And this will make the solder flow everywhere there's flux. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, stupid me. This is like copper pipe here. This doesn't fit over the copper pipe. This connects to the copper pipe with a coupling. So, I need to clean up the outside of this and then use this copper coupling after I do the same on it. Enough solder.
hopefully that made a decent connection. Now while we let that solder cool, let's go ahead and hook up our backflow connector. Do everything we can not crouched over the ditch. So there's an arrow on a backflow preventer or check valve. See the check valve in there? That shows which way the water needs to flow. So my street is that way. So the water needs to flow this way. Going from copper to poly. So that's what I want to do right now. I always like to put the Teflon tape on so that it goes in the direction that you're screwing. So what would we say? It's flowing this way into here. Make sure I don't cross thread it. That feels good. That's probably good. So water can flow this way, but if it tries to flow backward, it won't let it. Now let's take this out to the water meter and hook this side up. It's nothing but a hose connection there. Well, basically. I don't like that. That is very narrow in there. I think I need to replace this. See if I can get this loose. Maybe I'll try a big pipe wrench. You know, I don't even know if this will be usable after I get done. No, oh, it's not on the budge. Nice three-point bite on there. Oh, I think something is turning. Yes. Yes. All right. So what this is, is just an adapter to go from half inch to three quarter. So that's all I need right here. All right, we'll just put a lot of tape on that. Now, should we go ahead and hook this up? Why not? That should be good. Let's go stick this back in the ground. All right, since this has a rubber washer in it, I guess you would call it, grommet washer, we don't really need tape on this. So we'll thread it back on there. Now let's tighten up all these connections. I think they're all terrible. Does this whole thing flip over? Yeah. Now we'll get another one of these ready. All right. Now let's go put this on that soldered female connection we just made. All right. Now it's time for some black poly pipe. Let's 
Let's make sure we have enough slack on both ends. Yeah, that'll make it. It's all laying nice and flat. Underneath all those roots. It's away from the edge there. I have crimp connectors for poly pipe. I have a heat gun because sometimes this is really hard to get on when it's cold. I have my crimping tool and I just use PVC cutters to cut this. You have to kind of twist it when you use a PVC tool, otherwise it just squeezes it. Uh, you can see this is just too hard to get on. I'm just going to warm it up a little. See what we're doing. Uh, it's getting there. All right, let's go hook up the one at the house. Some muck in there. Put our crimping ring over it. There. Ring not gonna go like that. I don't want to get this too hot because it can actually damage, make it too soft, and or make it brittle. Just want to get it hot enough to be kind of slightly more flexible. Let's go turn the water back on and see if we did everything right. Gonna go slow here. Probably filling up some toilets in the house that people used. Now let's just check really carefully everywhere for leaks. So that connection's looking good. All the meter connections are looking good. I don't want to turn on any sink faucets in the house yet because it might there might be debris in the line that's going to clog up the uh, aerators. That connection looks good. I was worried about the solder. The solder looks good. Yes. Let's turn on this hose first. Take the end off of it. This is the first pathway after it comes into the house. It goes to this hose bib. So. Just let that run for a minute. Well, it's pretty clean. Go open the hose on the back side of the house. Hey girls. Get this stuff out of the way. Yes, this is a big mess. I actually think the flow's better. I think we took out some restrictions when uh, we removed that bushing. Cold water first, definitely. I 
think we're good to go. It would be smart before you turn the faucets on to remove all the aerators. Turn them on, let them run for a while, and then turn them off and put your aerators back on just so they don't clog up with anything that might be in the new line. What is it, Paul? What do you see? What do you see? Huh? What? What? You goofball. Goofball? Okay. Gotta go back outside. Bye-bye. Now we just need to fill the trench back in. Oh wait, after we put the meter box back in. made this little piece of PVC with a cutout in it so I can protect that wire for now. See if this will fit. I think it's too tight, actually. I have to widen it a little bit or I'll just stretch it out with a heat gun. I'll protect that for now. I guess I can get rid of this. 